Hello there, dear friends, and welcome once again to the Relaxed Fantasy Review. On this channel, we spend our time looking at fantasy of all sorts, from books to movies to video games, and applying the characters within into the tabletop game Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Today, though, we're going to be looking at a core mechanic of D&D itself, one of the most popular classes and one of the oldest tropes in all of fantasy, predating D&D, and pretty much going back to the beginning of human culture as a whole. The wizard. The wizard class is a student of magic. They did not gain their magic through natural means or through any sort of deal with a higher power. Instead, they simply studied. They're book nerds, they're library geeks, and they have themselves a spell book that gives them magic that ascends beyond most spellcasters. Wizards are incredible, but how do they stack up when you look at all their mechanics laid out? Let's have a look. Wizards have a hit dice of d6, the lowest in the game. Wizards are famous for their squishiness, and unfortunately they deserve that reputation, because wizards are not tanky at all. They get a 6 out of 10, because they just don't have many hit points to spare. They also have no proficiency in any kind of armor, meaning they can't defend themselves unless they're using magic to do so, which they do, but if they didn't have magic, then they couldn't defend themselves. They're no better than a common person. So 6 out of 10 for armor. No options there. Then weapons. They have some simple weapons, things like staves and daggers, but not the full suite, and certainly no martial weapons. So if, again, they don't want to use their magic, then they're kind of out of luck. They don't have much else they can use. 7 out of 10 for their weapon list. And no tool proficiencies either. Unfortunately, wizards don't have any kind of ability to use tools, and that's not super uncommon for classes in D&D, but there's no buff here, so 5 out of 10. Now they're saving throws. They get an intelligence saving throw proficiency and a wisdom saving throw proficiency. Wisdom, possibly the most useful in the game. Intelligence, not too bad. 8 out of 10 and 10 out of 10, respectively. Skills, they're not skill junkies. They get a, two skills proficiencies from a list of six. 8 out of 10 and 7 out of 10. You're not going to get a whole lot of skills out of a wizard. Most of them are study-based and knowledge-based, which isn't bad, but it's not particularly skillful, if that makes sense. But then you get their spellcasting, which is their main power. They are intelligence-based casters, one of the only ones in the entire game, the only one in the original one, in the original player's handbook. And they're full casters. They go all the way up to level 9, with a decent amount of cantrips and a huge selection of spells and spell slots. They are possibly the most powerful magic user in the whole game. 10 out of 10, because you can't get much better than the wizard's spell list. It is the biggest spell list and gives them the most versatility in any situation. Then you get the power Arcane Recovery. Wizards regain their spell slots on a long rest, which means that they need to be conservative with how much they use. I mean, they have a lot of them, but they still need to be kind of careful. Arcane Recovery is a low-level ability that allows you to regain a certain amount of spell slots, half of your wizard level, uh, when you take a short rest. This is very handy, because long rests are few and far between, and short rests come up a lot, so it's good that wizards can get a little bit back for that if they uh, burn out a little fast. Arcane Recovery, 9 out of 10. Ability score improvements, nothing special here. Standard 5, so that's an 8 out of 10 for that. Then, in the later levels, they get very, very cool powers. As high-level wizards, they gain the power Spell Mastery. This allows them to choose a first and second level spell and turn those spells into cantrips. Now, considering the wizards use their spells the entire game, they're going to have favorites. They're going to have spells they've been using since level 1 and level 2 that... level 1 and level 2 spells that they like, and they upcast often, and that keep them safe, and that they really, really like. And these spells, becoming cantrips, are fantastic. This means that they get to pick their favorites, and now they can just use them at will, saving their spell slots for more potent stuff. Or, just taking your most potent thing, and now you can throw it out all you want. 
10 out of 10 for this power. And then finally, signature spells. You get to pick uh, two third level spells, and the third level spells you can cast once per day without using a spell slot. So once again, it's a spell slot conservation thing, but third level spells are pretty strong. Like, they, even in the later game, they've got some validity. And getting them for free just gives you more spell slots to use. Once again, this is a 10 out of 10 power, giving you those free spells. And then you can still use them, as with your regular spell slots. Now you can just use them more. Nothing wrong with that. Now because of the wizard's unfortunately limited range of physical abilities... Their total, when you crunch the numbers, is 8 out of 10. Because they don't have anything other than their magic. But do they need anything other than their magic? Their spell list is as big as it gets. Nobody has a bigger spell list than the wizard. Their versatility with defense, utility, and raw power is unmatched. No one can use magic like the wizard. Other classes, like the Eldritch Knight and the Arcane Trickster, rogues and fighters that like to use magic along with their normal abilities, they borrow their spells from the wizard. It is not weird that the wizard is so well known and so well loved. The 8 out of 10 simply comes from the fact that they can't do anything else. And D&D is more than just about magic. There is more to it. They, their social encounters, exploration, and while wizards get spells to assist them in this, they're a one-trick pony. I mean, what a trick! What a trick! You cannot get better than wizard magic, but that's about all they can do. So if you want to use magic for absolutely everything you do and nothing else, then pick a wizard. They're not a bad pick. They're really, really powerful. And their subclasses add a lot. Like, that's another thing. We're looking at the base class here. So subclasses are a key factor when it comes to picking your wizard, because they give you a lot more power. But the base class is just kind of simple. It's good, and it's simple. This has been the Relaxed Fantasy Review. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe down below, and keep your eyes open for the other class reviews coming soon. Have a good one, my friends.